I'm going to show you how to graph a volume of revolution using a software called Autograph. This is the icon for it down here at the bottom. This software is free on the internet. When I was first introduced to the software like 15 years ago, it was like two, three hundred dollars. So it's amazing that it's free now. So you can go to completemaths.com and um, get your own copy of it. It is a British software. So you'll notice a few things like maths. All right. I'm going to go to, since I want to do three dimensions, I'm going to click up here on the new 3D graph page. And this is what I get. You can see it's a 3D graph page. And if I can move my mouse, click and drag, or even if I just sort of click and let go, it starts to move on its own, which is pretty cool. You can change the colors, like you can make it with a darker background. But I don't really love the way that this looks with the numbers on the outside, so let's make a few changes. First, I'm going to go to Axes and click off the Show Key. That was that white box there at the bottom. Now I'm going to go to Axes, Edit Axes. All right, I'm going to go to Options, and I'm going to click the Hide the Z axis, like so. And now it looks a little bit more familiar, but I still don't love those numbers on the outside. So Axes, Edit Axes, Options, and untick the box to Always Outside. And there, that looks a bit more familiar. So there's the x-axis and the y-axis. So we can just do some fancy kind of maneuvering to make it look like this is more what the students are used to seeing with two dimensions. Now I'm going to add an equation. So I click up here on the equal sign. And I'm going to graph y equals x squared. Now if I go ahead and click OK, I'm going to show you what happens. Uh, then I get this sort of a three-dimensional parabola, which is not what I want. So I'm going to double click on the graph of it again. So I get back to this um, edit equation window and I have to tick the box plot as 2D equation. And that looks more familiar as a parabola. Now I want to actually change my axes a little bit more. I'm going to make my um, y axis go up to 5 and down to negative 5 because I'm going to bound from 0 to 2 and I want to make sure that when it rotates I can see the whole thing. So I'm going to go to back to axes, edit axes, and we're going to do a negative 5 to 5. And also, you might have to change your z, even though you can't see the z-axis, because it's going to rotate out toward you. And you want to make sure that you see the whole shape. So now what I have to do is bound the area. So I'm going to click on the graph, right click. Notice the graph turned into a gray color. Click on Create Area. And this is also awesome when you're talking about Riemann sums and whatnot. And you can see here for the different methods, I actually use this to check my, um, my answers to questions that I write for my calculus students. So you can choose left rectangles, right rectangles, midpoint, trapezium rule. So here's an example of why it's written by a British guy instead of trapezoidal rule. So for the start point, I'm going to do zero. And the end point, I'm going to do two. And I click OK. And I get this area here. It's like a pink color. It's kind of hard to see in the big screen in my classroom. So you can right click on it and choose edit draw options and then you can change the color of it to like blue fill style blue click OK and you see it a bit more. All right now what so now you have to do that first bound your area first and I'm going to take that area and I'm going to rotate it around the x-axis and before I do that I'm going to click on the turtle because that makes it really a lot more fun. So right click on the area or I just clicked on the area it turned yellow right click and choose create volume and you can see up here in this dialog box that you have the uh, option of doing only a horizontal axis of rotation because you've got the y equals. So you cannot do a vertical axis of rotation. And I'm going to go ahead and just bound by the x axis. So I click OK. And there's where the magic happens. You can see it happens slowly and you can move your screen around. And before I show my students this one, of course, I would also um, give them the graph of like a, a line, a slant line, and tell them the area between 0 and 2. If you rotate it, what are you going to get? And they're going to see this cone. Same thing with just like a horizontal line. You bound it, you rotate, you're going to get a cylinder. So I do those first, and then I do it with a curve. And then I ask them to tell me what they think that looks like. Some of them will say it looks like a, a hat. It looks like a um, Hershey's Kiss is the most popular one. And if you're really motivated, you could give out Hershey's Kisses to your students at that time. <laughs> that day. You can change the color of that area, uh, the shading as well, by right click at a draw options and you can maybe have it draw in blue. And like so you can change the edit draw options. The uh, transparency as well, which is kind of nice because then you can sort of see if you really change it to very, very transparent. Show you that. Then you can kind of see the area underneath there that you rotated. All right, now I'm going to show you with uh, two curves, so basically the washer method. All right, so I went back to my basic parabola, y equals x squared, and now I'm adding a new equation, negative x squared plus 2. I want to make sure I click on plot as 2D equation. There's my graph. I know that they're bounded between negative 1 and 1, so I want to find that area first. So click the two graphs, right-click, create area, um, and then I want to go from negative 1 to 1. 
So the area showed up here in like a light green color. Um, my students can't see that very well on the big screen. So of course you can change the color, fill style, uh, you know, purple, something like that. Now they can see a little bit better. Right click, create, volume. I'm mean, again just going to rotate around the X axis. I might ask the students to speculate what they think it's going to look like. The turtle is still turned on. So then I get this, it's turned into a yellow color this time, which you can change if you want. It's kind of fun just to let it move on its own. Okay, let me go back to a sort of a normal view. Now I'm gonna get rid of that one and let's rotate around another axis. So we can choose create volume and maybe rotate around Y equals negative two. Okay. And then here we get sort of a funky looking donut shape. But you can see that it's been cut off right down there. So I would need to get, to get a better view. I would need to go into my axes and edit my Y minimum and make it maybe a negative seven or something to make sure I get that full shape and view. And that's it. That's what I want to show you how to graph a volume of revolution using autograph.